least of time, places. let me just... Just I, like I do, Biden I do is hollowing out this I do country. have a follow-up hey, question. Ron, in California. Ron, I'm happy that you continue to talk. Let's talk a little bit about Bidenomics, because I'm happy to take that on right now as well. And I think it's You're a fair point. You're a big point. supporter of it. That's, I, I appreciate you acknowledging 14 that. 14 million jobs, 10 times more than the last three Republican presidents combined. Because he had... 815,000 manufacturing the, the, the jobs. the jobs were because 3. of the COVID percent Are you kidding me? 3.9% <laughs> unemployment. As he continues to talk over me, I'll talk to the American people. 3.9% unemployment, the lowest black unemployment in American history, the lowest unemployment for Hispanics in America. American history, the lowest unemployment for women in 70 years, the lowest black poverty rates in history. That's this administration's agenda. And by the way, as you smile and smirk over there, you should know this, the American people. Here's a guy who celebrated Bidenomics just this week, celebrating $28 million that came into your state because of the Chips and Science Act, one of the most significant economic plans right. since FDR. I'm proud of the work Biden and Harris have done. Would you like to respond? And I the debate between the Florida MAGA Republican Governor Ron DeSantis and California's pro-democracy Governor Gavin Newsom took place on Thursday. It went very badly for MAGA Republican Governor Ron DeSantis. Pro-democracy Governor Gavin Newsom landed multiple knockout punches, including what you just saw there at the outset. Point by point of the MAGA Republican disinformation talking points, pro-democracy California Governor Gavin Newsom took the upper hand and just demonstrated to Ron DeSantis and to the MAGA Republican audience watching Fox and hopefully others watching Fox as well that these talking points by the MAGA Republicans are flimsy and performative. Let me show you this other clip here by Gavin Newsom talking about how this debate between pro-democracy Gavin Newsom and MAGA Republican Ron DeSantis is about contrast. But Gavin Newsom does say that there is one thing that they have in common. Play the clip. And and, and I want to answer that very directly. I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm, I'm here uh, to tell the truth about the Biden-Harris record and also compare and contrast Ron DeSantis's record and the Republican Party's record as a point of contrast that's as different as daylight and darkness. You want to bring us back to a pre-1960s world, America in reverse. Uh, you want to roll back hard-earned national rights on voting rights, on civil rights, on LGBTQ rights, on women's rights, not just access to abortion, but also access to contraception. You want to weaponize grievance. You are focusing on false separateness. You in particular, Ron, are on a banning binge, a cultural purge, intimidating and humiliating people you disagree with. You and President Trump are really trying to light democracy on fire. So, Sean, there are profound differences tonight, and I look forward to engaging them. But there's one thing in closing that we have in common is neither of us will be the nominee for our party in 2024. So then Gavin Newsom addressed this MAGA Republican talking point on COVID and COVID restrictions and threw it right back in Ron DeSantis's face. Quite literally, play the clip. Open, Never, Sean, you were close. If it's, if it's okay with you, We'll do this. Why were you close for so long? Why don't we do this so in a long? way where we both can have Why were you close for so long? You wore you a mask close. with guys, Donald guys, Trump close. outside I'm to let it in September 2020. He did all of that until he decided to fall prey to the fringe of his party. And as a consequence of that, Ron, tens of thousands of people lost their lives. Not true. The equivalent, if I had your policies, the equivalent of 10 9-11s, tens of thousands of people lost their lives. And for what, Ron? Those are more lies. In fact, the Lancet just did a study. <laughs> Florida had a lower standardized COVID death rate than California did. That's a Lancet let me, study. Let me, yeah, one more thing. One more thing. The other thing we had, the, the other thing you California had, your California had higher excess mortality than All right, than gentlemen, Florida. gentlemen. Let me talk about that, the excess uh, mortality hang, hang, real quick. Honestly, because the hold excess on a second mortality this, is other things. I want to ask you both. If, well, slow down. I want everyone to be heard. If I can ask you, I really. Next on the MAGA Republican talking point that everybody's fleeing California and blue states to go to Florida, 
Gavin Newsom just pointed out the facts and the data saying it's going to be a fun fact check for you when you learn that actually more people are coming from Florida to California. Watch this. Um, great opening statement, but <laughs> didn't it did not the question. Ad- it, it I didn't mean, I address think- the issue. Can you explain this migration out of California and going to red you mean, state? You mean, blue state? Well, hold on. You, you mean the, the, the last two years, more Floridians going to California than Californians going to Florida? No, I, I put <laughs> up on, I put that's up on just, the By the way, <laughs> that's going to be fun to fact check. So we'll just start right there. California has no peers. Uh, California dominates. Size of 21 state populations combined. It's the fifth largest economy in the world. We dominate. Number one manufacturing state. We dominate in two-way trade and research and development, uh, access to innovation, more scientists, more researchers, more engineers, more Nobel laureates in the state of California than any other state in the nation. The finest system of higher education. It's the birthplace of life science and biotech and nanotechnology. We dominate in green tech. We dominate in high tech. We dominate in artificial intelligence. So with respect, I think it's an interesting case campaign strategy for Ron DeSantis to be bashing a state of 40 million Americans when California simply has no peers. That's a pretty slick way of not answering your question. He went on a binge of putting out a lot of left-wing platitudes. Here's what I would say. And pro-democracy Governor Gavin Newsom took the upper hand on immigration and explained how callous and the callous disregard for life that DeSantis has, that DeSantis's so-called immigration policies are built on cruelty and how hypocritical Governor DeSantis is. Play the clip. First from our own Border Patrol, are the American people being lied to? I don't think they're being lied to. The Biden administration put out a comprehensive plan day one when he got sworn into office three years ago, and the Republican Party didn't touch it. They haven't moved on it. They play politics with us. And I'll be honest with you, I think there's probably one person I wouldn't listen to on this topic more than the guy that I'm standing next to, Ron DeSantis. He is absolutely lacks any credibility on the issue of immigration. When he was in Congress, he supported amnesty. When he's in Congress, you supported John Boehner's bill. It's a fact. When you were in Congress, you supported Obama's. You supported Obama's efforts to advance comprehensive reform. The last guy you want to talk to on the issue of immigration, your immigration policy can best be described as a governor from the state of Florida going into another state, the state of Texas, lying to migrants, promising them jobs and housing, sending them to an island, Martha's Vineyard, and then sending them to a parking lot in Sacramento, California. I met with those migrants that you lied to under false pretense. That kind of gamesmanship, using human beings as pawns, I think is disqualifying. So again, A guy who stands here, who's been out on the Republican debate stage saying, well, he's going to be tough. He's going to shoot people with backpacks uh, and that he has a strategy to potentially even invade our second largest trading partner, uh, Mexico, that has a record of supporting amnesty and supporting reforms under the Obama administration is the last guy to be standing on stage talking about the issue of immigration reform tonight. Well, I'll tell you. And here, Governor Newsom says, you're trying to out Trump Trump, but How's that working for you? You're down by 41% in your own state, Ron. Play the clip. By the way, do you see that risk, Governor Newsom? Hold on. on. do Do you see the risk? Joe Biden put out not only a comprehensive plan, he consistently puts up plans. I Hold understand. on, no, but Sean, is there, let me, is no, there no, a let me, risk? I'm going to answer, answer your question. I, I support border security. I think the asylum system is broken. I believe that we need... I understand that. I, I'm, the one that I'm the only guy here that's a border state governor. You're trolling folks and trying to find migrants to play political games, to try to get some news and attention so you can out Trump Trump. And by the way, how's that going for you, Ron? You're down 41 points in your own home state. On the issue of immigration, Joe Biden put- The next issue that was discussed was the issue of crime. One of the MAGA Republican talking points is that there's all this crime in democratic states and democratic cities and as Gavin Newsom points out is that that's just belied by the data. If you go into Florida, if you go into red states, red counties, red cities, statistically, there is more crime, more murders, higher death rates, and other serious, serious issues in red states. And again, this is what we talk about all the time on the Midas Touch Network, so I was glad that Governor DeSantis took the upper hand here and just said, no, you all have way more crime. What are you talking about?
Play the clip. And security, I would argue, is a prerequisite for the pursuit of happiness. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. We're near 50-year lows, down 55% violent crimes in the state of California from the 1990s. And I want to compare and contrast that with the issue in Florida that you didn't mention, and that's the murder rate. And let's broaden it more broadly. The issue is seven out of the top Those numbers 10, were part of the murder rate. Seven of the top 10 murder rates in the United States of America are red states. He has a 66% higher gun death rate than the state of California. He has a higher murder rate. Go to places like Jacksonville. Go to places like Orlando. Go to places like Tampa. The murder rate's off the charts compared, compared to cities like San Francisco. And you know what? Even more egregiously, Sean, and I think this is important, the American people deserve an answer from you, Ron. You, you had one of the most, worst mass shootings in American history, Parkland. 17 kids were gunned down, lives lost, 17 others, lives torn asunder. You had a, a young girl by the name of Jamie Gutenberg, whose father pleaded with you to do something about it. And you know what you did? They did the exact opposite. You made it easier for felons to get guns without background checks, without any training. These people pleaded with the parents and the families to get tough on gun safety. And again, you made it easier for felons. He said of you, Ron, and I agree with him, after, after you signed that concealed carry bill, which increases the likelihood, Fred Gutenberg said, of more Jamies losing their lives and more Parklands, he called you weak, pathetic, and small. So with respect, I appreciate you're talking to police officers in the state of California. You may want to spend a little bit also more time Ohio. not on the Ohio Trail All and right. other places across this country. You may spend a little more time back in your home state and address the murder and gun violence in your own backyard. Governor so this is, this is the slick politician. You put up the... And then Governor Newsom took the MAGA Republican talking point performative that they say they black the blue, they back the blue. Well, as Governor Newsom says, you're saying you back the blue. Y'all are dangling pardons for January 6th insurrectionists. Play the clip. I love this guy talking about backing the blue when you dangled pardons for January 6th insurrectionists, 85 of them that were literally were charged with attacking law enforcement. You talk a big game about backing the blue. With all due respect to the crime rate, again, he's not answering the fact that he has a higher murder rate than the state of California, a 66% higher gun death rate than the state of California. And I can easily answer this point. Gun safety saves lives. I don't think it. I know it. And the data bears that out in the state of California. California proudly does lead in terms of common sense gun safety. Common sense gun safety saves lives. You had the chance to do something meaningful. You had a chance to do something on behalf of those Parkland families. You did the exact opposite. You moved in the exact opposite direction. With all due respect, look at your own backyard, Ron. So You're I not mining that, your backyard on this that, issue. I will do and then the issue was discussed on the complete and total abortion bans by MAGA Republican governors like Ron DeSantis. And here you'll see in these clips right here that Governor Newsom just addressed the uh, talking point that's trying to that the MAGA Republicans always try to use and saying, well, oh, Democrats support abortion all the time, abortion at will. And as Governor Newsom said, look, I'll address that question. But first, let's talk about the policies of MAGA Republicans, where you have the most extreme abortion bans that exist. And then he goes on to say, no, this should not be the role of the government. These are extreme situations, if you're talking about third trimester abortions, where the there's a fetal abnormality that is going to result in the death of the mother or the fetus, and that without having the medically necessary procedure, there's going to be the death of the mother or the fetal abnormality means that there's already going to be a death to begin with and the trauma that's going to be caused to the mother for having to deal with this. And as Governor Newsom says, these are the most difficult and extreme circumstances. So how dare you try to mock women as though this is something that just happens all the time? How dare you? Play the clip. There be, hurt your would you support a ban on abortion in seven, eighth, or ninth month for, if, the, the if, if the mother's life is it not is in extreme, jeopardy. extreme, extreme exception. People aren't going on and having abortion. Should it be illegal unless then? something if devastating rare, has happened. Should it be it illegal? It should be up to the mother and her doctor and her conscience. And it so almost the answer is always, no restriction. I, I've already answered it. And I'll, no and I'll just reinforce it. 
to cover okay. up again. No, hold on for the most question, very specific. Do you support any restrictions at all on abortion, especially in months seven, eight and nine past viability? I'm going to answer that question, but let's talk about the issue of abortion. Let's talk about the issue. You're going to answer it. I'm going to answer that question. Okay. I'll repeat that. But I think this is important and it bears repeating. Ron DeSantis has signed the most extreme anti-abortion bills in America. He signed a bill banning any exceptions for rape and incest. And then he said it didn't go far enough and decided to sign a six week ban before women even know they're pregnant, Ron, before women can even access a doctor's appointment. So extreme is your ban that criminalizes women and criminalizes doctors that even Donald Trump said it was too extreme. On the issue of the extreme exception that you highlight as it relates to the issue of later term abortion, it's almost always because of a fetal anomaly, the life of the mother. And in those rare cases, I trust and answer your question, I trust the mother and her doctor to make that decision. So in other words, I wanna be clear on this. If a woman and her doctor, for any reason, not for any reason, no, 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 no. I'm asking. And then Governor Newsom addressed how MAGA Republican Governor Ron DeSantis picks on and bullies marginalized communities and attacks the LGBTQ plus community. Watch this. Watch Gavin Newsom stand up to this bully, Ron DeSantis. It's incredible. Play the clip. You've been on a banning bench. 1,406 books have been banned just last year under Ron DeSantis' leadership. I love that he keeps pulling this out. I've seen this. He's been doing this all of a campaign trail. What's wrong with Tony Morrison's books? It's not banned. What's wrong? It's not true. It's not. What's wrong with Amanda Gorman's? It's not banned. And the poetry. 1,406. False narratives. 1,406 books narratives. have been banned on your banning binge in the state of Florida. As it relates to parental rights, come on. California, it's in our constitution, parental engagement. It's called the LCFF process. We actually require parental engagement on curriculum development. And we we don't complete lie. We don't require K through third grade sexual education. That doesn't happen until middle school. What you're doing is using education as a sword for your cultural purge. And you know what? With all due respect, you know, I remember in the 1970s, in the 1970s, we had a bill called the Briggs Initiative. And there was a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan so offended by the Briggs Initiative, which was the original don't say gay bill. In that case, it was not allowing teachers that happened to be gay to teach. And Reagan had the courage to stand up. And he said, you can't catch gay like you can measles. I don't like the way you demean people. I don't like the way you demean the LGBTQ community. I don't like the way you demean and humiliate people you disagree with, Ron. I really find this fundamentally offensive. And this is a core value that distinguishes the values of my state and frankly, the vast majority of Americans against the weaponization of education right. and the purging but I, that he's I, I have a follow-up question. And perhaps my favorite line of the evening when Governor Newsom was asked the talking point by the MAGA Republicans, and you'll see Sean Hannity ask the question about President Biden's age. And you'll see, as Governor Newsom said, I'd rather have President Biden at a hundred than you at any age, Ron DeSantis. And the results of President Biden speak for themselves. Play the clip. And in other words, it's the toughest job in the world. Is Joe Biden experiencing this uh, cognitive decline? Is it a danger to the country? Do you find when he speaks, what is your reaction to it? Yes, he's in decline. Yes, it's a danger to the country. He has no business running for president. And you know, Gavin Newsom agrees with that. He won't say that. That's why he's running his shadow campaign. Uh, he should not be running. Uh, he is not up to the job. Uh, and it is dangerous for this country. Well, I'll take, I'll, I will take Joe Biden at 100 versus Ron DeSantis any day of the week at any age. In fact, all so of the you folks think, you think on the campaign You think he's up to the job? You think he's 100%? I've been spending 100%? plenty of time with Joe 100%? Biden in okay. private and public. Answer. You don't know. And by the way, results matter. Inflation now is down to 3.2%. Wages are up to 4.4%. The economy is booming, 5.2% GDP okay. growth in the last quarter. Those are facts you don't hear on Fox News. 14 million jobs, 10 times Let more than the last Let me move on. Three. That was the light. And there you have it, folks. The highlights of the debate between pro-democracy Governor Gavin Newsom and MAGA Republican Governor Ron DeSantis. And I think that very dramatically 
highlights the differences here and what's at stake. And I want to make this comment about Governor Newsom as well. Governor Newsom supporting the Democratic Party, supporting President Biden, supporting the success that President Biden is having. It just shows you how Governor Newsom is setting himself up for a future run in 2028, but doing it by supporting his team, team democracy, supporting the American people. And that's what I think is is really something that I think was special on display. Obviously, Governor Newsom is an incredible uh, debater. He's someone who has a command of the facts, a commanding presence. I mean, seeing him stand next to Ron DeSantis was a huge contrast. And you could see him just laughing at him. And it was great to see a bully like Ron DeSantis come down to his real size, his real self, devoid of the heels that he likes to wear, where we could all see what's really up right here. That's what happens when you confront a bully like that. So uh, incredible to cover uh, this uh, debate, and I would love to hear your comments below. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers thanks to your support. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.